Hello, in this video we are going to explore a point cloud of Rotterdam using the new profile tool in QGIS 3.26. We will download the data from this website where we can download the point cloud in the LAZ format. I will provide the link in the description of this video. In QGIS 3.26 you can drag the last file to the map canvas and first it will show only the extent and it will give a progress bar because in the background it is converting this uh, LAS format to the COPC or COPC format, which stands for Cloud Optimized Point Cloud. This can take a few minutes. After the conversion, you can see the point cloud in the classes of the classification. Let's have a look at the layer styling panel, what these colors mean. So by default, it uses the classification of the point cloud that, uh, that's in the data. And uh, the panel also gives the percentage of each class. You see that the projection is not recognized. So we're going to add uh, first the projection of the project, in this case, the Dutch projection and then we set that same projection for the layer. Now let's add OpenStreetMap to see if it's at the right spot and to have a background uh, reference. And here we see that there's a perfect overlap. Instead of showing the classification per point, we can also uh, change the style by using the drop down here. And we can choose attribute by ramp and then we can choose one of the attributes in this uh, point cloud. For example, we can use the Z value, which gives the elevation. This point cloud does not have the RGB value, so we cannot have a representation of uh, the colors like in an aerial photograph. I'm switching now to extent only because that's easier for us to define the transect. Well, in the past you had to load a plugin for the profile tool. You can now find it in the view menu. This icon can be used to capture the curve or you can capture curve from an existing feature. Let's capture a new curve. I'll make sure I go over a few landmarks in the center of the city, like the World Trade Center, the church, the library, the cube buildings, and uh, the Williams Bridge. And as with other digitizing tools, you click right to complete the line. And you see here that the profile is updated and it uses the default color um, when it's in the extent mode. But you can also colorize the points with any of the other settings. So both the 2D map and uh, the profile use the same styling. So here we see the points classified with the colors of these classes. Let's switch back to extent only. In the layer properties, we can change some more settings. You can see here that there's a new tab elevation added to the layer properties where we can change the point size. Make it a bit smaller. I can choose circle instead of square points. And I can check this box to apply the opacity by distance from the curve, which gives a nice effect. And I change the color to green. That's the default color when we are in the extent only view. And green is the color of Rotterdam. You see when I move my mouse over the profile that uh, it also moves in the 2D view that the black dot shows where we are. I can hide uh, the layer tree and I can also uh, stretch the panel a bit so it has a better uh, proportion. And here is the tolerance setting which determines within which distance the points need to be taken into account, the distance from our transect, which is also indicated with the gray band around the line in the 2D view. So we can have a denser transect or less dense. So you can calibrate this to get uh, the best result. Of course, the result in which you can identify uh, the landmarks or the objects that you're interested in. You can also zoom in. So here we see the library and the pencil building and the cube buildings. And uh, you can uh, also pan. There's the marked hall. And we can also export the profile to PDF or to an image file. Let's quickly take the opportunity to also look at the new features in the 3D map view. So I open the new 3D map view and I go here to the 3D styling 
tab. And there I choose that I want to style the 3D map using an attribute with a ramp. And I choose the Z value. And I'll just keep this ramp. You can dock it or you can uh, keep it like this. You could also switch off the docking. And when I drag my mouse down with the scroll, I can uh, view the area in uh, 3D, but uh, this was already possible in uh, previous versions. The new features are here in this menu. You can show the visible camera area from the 3D map in the 2D map. And when I rotate, you can see that it's linked. And that works very nicely. Another option is to have the 2D view follow the 3D view. So if I move the 3D view, the 2D view is updated. And there's another setting to do that vice versa. So here we see the marked hall. Now you see that when we are very much zoomed in, it shows uh, all the points. And there's also a new feature that we can uh, on the fly triangulate these points. And you can find that here in the 3D styling. There's a little bug, I cannot extend the layer styling panel. But I can check this box and it will uh, automatically triangulate the 3D view. So we don't see the individual points anymore, but it uses a thin interpolation. Which makes it easier to uh, recognize the buildings, it looks smoother. So let's move to another area and do another uh, transect, the area around the Erasmus Bridge. Let's change the light so we can better see how it looks like in the 3D view. And I can see where that is in the 2D view until I close the 3D view, of course. So I'm going to define a new uh, transect. This button you can clear uh, the profile and create a new one. Go over the bridge and I make an angle to also have those uh, characteristic buildings in our profile. Click right and here we see that uh, the profile is constructed. Also here you can play with the tolerance. So we can also change how it uh, is styled. So here we use again the classification. So in this video, you've seen some new features of QGIS 3.26, the profile tool, and some new uh, options in the 3D view.